You've been a bad girl. Chad says, Britt, speaking of Tucker Carlson, how do I convince my dad to stop watching him? After I convince my dad to stop watching him, I'll try to convince your dad to stop watching him. Girl, I know how you feel, girl. I know how you feel. <laughs> I love my dad, but bro. Oh, this uh, politics be tense in my household. That's why I don't live at home, girl. I live in a different country oh let me tell you i love my parents you know your parents are so loving and they'll say don't you think i'm smart don't you think i know things i think everyone is smart and everyone is stupid i think everybody is unique and everyone is flawed and everyone is perfect and everyone is imperfect and i just think like i love the consciousness that you are but girl do not talk positively about tucker carlson to my face please especially after a clip like this girl i have now i have not checked in with my dad for about six months about tucker carlson so who knows how he feels now? He's still voting for Trump, of course, because my parents are conservatives. And my mom and I have basically not talked about the election. I mean, I'm not even going to probably, I, I mean, I, you know, the election's around the corner and I'm already like, I'm already running the script of what I'm going to do if Kamala wins or Trump wins. And usually I just don't say anything, or at least I try not to push it, put it in anyone's face, regardless of how it goes, just because I know like they're just afraid, for, like they're deathly afraid for America. And the same way everybody else feels like my parents are so worried about America because they feel like as immigrants, they came here and America made their life better, which is such a beautiful thing to happen to anybody who goes somewhere foreign is to be like, I feel welcomed here. Like I'm in Croatia. I feel very welcomed here. People have been very nice and it's a nice feeling, you know? And so I want to just keep my heart open to the fact that that's their journey and that's respectable in its own way. But Nobody pisses me off more than rich people pretending to be poor or people from extreme privileged background taking advantage of people that are hopeful and foolish enough to fall for their rhetoric. And Tucker Carlson is the most privileged, spoiled brat that I've ever seen, been caught time and time again on tape saying that like they are peasants, we have to convince them they don't want to be us. He is as elite as you fucking get. And he's out here trying to convince people that he's, you know, fighting against the elites. And I am, with peace and love, shook to my core that people believe anything that comes out of this snake's mouth. And that's really an insult to snakes because snakes are gorgeous animals, bro. But here is the snake himself slithering his tongue in between your... Brittany too far. Brittany too far. Brittany too far. In my defense, the clip is incredibly creepy. Too far, Brittany, but you know where I was going with that. Let's get into it. Full context, at least for this part of the clip, four minutes. Here we go. Kamala Harris shouldn't have a job. She has no skills. How Kamala Harris shouldn't have a job. He is, she has no skills. Like already, right off the bat, so passionate about absolutely no point made. How did we wind up with a system where Kamala Harris, you couldn't change the tire on your truck, much less drive it? How did she wind up at the top of the pyramid? I'm sorry, do we think Trump could change a tire on a car? Do we really think Trump is capable of like changing a tire? Do we think this man has ever changed a tire in his whole life? <laughs> Please. <laughs> and then once she's there, she lectures you like you did something. It's too much. You can't allow that. It's an offense against the truth, against reality and against justice itself. And the second reason you can't allow it is very familiar to anyone who has children, which is if you allow it, you will encourage more of it. If you allow people to get away with things that are completely over the top and outrageous. If you allow your two-year-old to smear the contents of his diapers on the wall of your living room. Okay, which might be your parents one day because Alzheimer's is a real illness and you might smear poop on the walls, okay? Shout out to those suffering from Alzheimer's. Chad says, does Trump even know how to drive? I don't know if he knows how to drive, but I also know he probably never has had to. Rich people do not drive because of lawsuits. When you're rich, you do not drive because if you get in an accident and people might even crash into you in purpose, they know you have to pay out. So rich people do not drive for legality reason alone. That's one of the privileges rich people lose when they become wealthy is like you are not allowed to drive anymore because you run the risk of losing everything. And you do nothing about it. If you allow your 14 year old to light a joint at the breakfast table. OK, first of all. 14 is kind of young to be smoking, period. But also, if my 18-year-old wants to light up a smoke at the dinner table, bro, as long as we're in the outside backyard section of the house, let's fucking go, okay? We can send them to the to fight a war. We can, you know, they can smoke a joint. You know what I mean? 
but also to the parents that let their kids drink underage and, and smoke underage and do all these things. I think there's a context in which all of us would tolerate some behavior out of people on occasion, but never in a way that long form hurts our children. Like who's out here really letting their kids smoke and drink at 14 who isn't like doing some weird one-off as a parent. Sometimes I hear these stories from parents and even my mom did let me drink some blueberry or blackberry brand, no blackberry brandy while I was reading Hemingway, Hemingway at like 15 because you know, it's like classy and stuff. It was like, I was going through a phase. Okay. And I was like, let me drink alcohol. And my mom was like from Iraq. Like there, there's not exactly like drinking rules in the way that she grew up. And I do think realistically, it's not that your kid is doing these things. It's in what context the relationship is happening. Yeah, good point, chat. Some conservatives are giving their kids guns as gifts because they um, they became men at 14. It's cultural. Well, in general, they're giving literally weapons to their children. And look, we're all going to debate over what is good parenting. But let me tell you this. Most people aren't qualified to be parents, in my opinion, huh? You want a really harsh opinion? Most people are doing good enough in terms of animals. But personally, I think most of these people would have been better off not being parents. But I have a very high standard. So you know what? <laughs> you do you, kids. I'm never going to ask the government to intervene and say you shouldn't be parents. But let's be real. Enough of us have had to pay for therapy to know. Y'all should have gone to therapy before becoming parents, okay? Thank you. If you allow your hormone-addled 15-year-old daughter to like slam the door of her bedroom and give you the finger, you're gonna get more of it. And those kids are gonna wind up in rehab. It's not good for you and it's not good for them. No. There has to be a point at which. Yo, I feel like a three-year-old could definitely bully Tucker Carlson. I feel like a three-year-old would definitely make him cry, bro. Dad comes home. Okay, listen to this. Listen to this cringe part. There has to be a point at which dad comes home. Wait, wait, wait. Chad says, I completely agree. There should be a license for being a parent. Actually, I do not agree. I think no government should have the right to tell you what to do with your body, especially when it comes to making a baby. I want to make it abundantly clear, even though I think most people shouldn't be parents, I would never allow the government to tell me what to do with my body. Go f yourself. Never, ever, ever give the government the power to tell you what to do with your own body, ever. Even at the expense of anything that comes after it. Never, ever, 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 ever. Whether it's having an abortion or keeping that baby, it's none of your god business. Never let the government keep people from having babies because they decided you're not good enough to be a parent. Nobody tells me anything. Yeah, that's right. Dad comes home. Get ready, girls. And he's pissed. Dad is pissed. Wait, dad or daddy? Because which one's coming home right now? <laughs> have, you, have you seen those TikToks where wives will say like, daddy, and then the husband and the dad will turn around at the same time? <laughs> he's not vengeful. He loves his children. Disobedient as they may be, he loves them. Because there's children, they live in his house. But he's very disappointed in their behavior. And he's- oh My guy, daddy, chill, daddy. Yes, school is show, daddy, chill, daddy. He's gonna have to let them know. He's gonna have to get to your room right now and think about what you did. And when dad gets home, you know what he says? You've been a bad girl. <laughs> Daddy, no, daddy. <laughs> You've been a bad little girl and you're getting a vigorous spanking right now. <laughs> daddy, no. <laughs> and no, it's not going to hurt me more than it hurts you. No, it's not. I'm not going to lie. This is going to hurt you a lot more than it hurts me. And you earned this. You're getting a vigorous spanking because you've been a bad girl. <laughs> And it has to be this way. It <laughs> Tell me that is not the funniest. This man be watching porn. This man be watching porn. I know what kind of porn he be watching. I ex This needs to be clipped. We need to have a soundbite for this, bro. You've been a very, very bad girl. And daddy's going to spank you. Sir, ma'am. <laughs> ma'am. 
has to be this way because it's true. And you're only going to get better when you take responsibility for what you did. That's not said in the spirit of hate. Oh. It's not said in the spirit of vengeance or mm, bigotry. Far mm. from it. It's said in the spirit of justice, oh. which is the purest and best thing there is. And without it, things fall apart. Mm. The Democratic Party machine, and notice I'm not beating up on Kamala Harris, who's just a hapless victim who happened to be there in the right color, so they grabbed her. The right what? What did he say? The right color? Mm, mm, mm. I don't know about that. That felt like a dog whistle to me. You know what's so funny about Tucker Carlson and all these people? Is like, I feel like they're describing kind of Trump a little bit where I want to bend him over my knee. Honestly, Trump might like it the way he likes golden showers. You know what I'm saying? Allegedly. That's what I've heard. I don't know if that's true, but no judgment, of course. Tim Walls, they needed some, you know, whatever, whatever Tim Walls is. They needed a weak man because it is the party of weak men and unhappy women. Ah, uh, yes. Nothing stronger than a gold man. Or, or, or What is it? A brave man. A, what is it? What did he say? A real man? Oh, nothing stronger than a real man who's who beats on his children. That's what I've always said. Ah, uh, yes. You know what a really, truly strong man does? Beats on people half his side, size or a quarter of his size, really. Mm. You know what a real man is? A man who bends his daughter over his knee at the ripe age of 15, spanks her because he knows she's been a very bad girl. Mm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Tucker. One of which leads to the other, by the way. Where you find weak men, you will inevitably find unhappy women. Sorry. And they make them on purpose. They weaken the men to drive the women insane to have the most consistent voting bloc ever in the history of politics. Yo, what, is, what conspiracy theory is, is this, huh? Unhappy women made unhappy by weak men. But it could be anybody. It could be anybody. Kamala Harris is just a stand-in. She's a cardboard cutout. Okay. It's, I mean, I, you know, I, she has a soul. God created her. I'm not attacking her true humanity. But there's uh -huh. nothing there. It doesn't matter. If it wasn't Kamala Harris, it would be, I don't know, Pete Buttigieg or whatever. You know, who are these people? They're, it doesn't matter. Yo, he kind of crazy looking, right? They're the cutouts. They work for the machine. They're totally... Um, just a reminder that he's literally the grandson of Swanson Frozen Food. He's literally born into so much wealth. He probably wipes his ass with $20 bills, bro dispensable they're replaceable and they need to have limits set for them he literally became a journalist to piss off his parents like he joined like basically talk radio and like journalism to piss off his parents you know what's so funny about this is look i grew up being spanked i grew up being hit by my parents for sure like that was their version of corporal punishment though i i will say around from my memory last time i got hit i was about 15 15, 16. And that was the last time. I think they stopped because I, I do think there was like an implication of like, okay, this is like getting out of hand to an extent, which I think is true. And I think growing up in a house that was kind of middle of the road where like you either grew up with parents that never spanked you or parents that spanked you so bad CPS had to be called. And then there's us who were in the middle. I call us middle-y, like middle trauma traumatized people. We're like middle traumatized, which is like, okay, we're not like, well, CPS doesn't need to be called, but like, intervention needs to happen a therapist a priest somebody needs to be like okay you gotta slow the down huh and then like because your parents really care they do slow the down versus the parents that like find ways to fuck you up even behind closed doors so i think when you grow up in the middle of the road which is what tucker tucker's representing tucker is trying to represent the parents that hit their kids but tell you it's for your greater good like you know that saying he said where it's like this hurts you more than it hurts me and he said it's not gonna hurt me more than it hurts you it's gonna hurt you more that is the conversation, right, that's being had. Oh, no, for the record, I wasn't spanked at 15, right? Spanking is for kids. If you grew up in a corporal punishment household, you get spanked as a kid because spanking is usually on the bottom or on the hand. And if you're older as a kid, you get the sandal. If you're not from this bubble, it's too much to handle. But it is really is like middle of the road, which is even more ironic. But it is like abuse meant to be done out of love, which is why like Tucker Carlson 
is allowed to use these like slogans and talk about it this way because that is a bubble that exists in the world. I mean, there are school districts in America that are allowed to spank your kids. So just like keep this in mind, like parents sign off on it. So again, I am anti spanking children. I think if you have to spank a child, you've like lost control. You're not thinking. But what they do is they tell themselves like, as long as you're not spanking your child out of anger, and as long as you're doing it within reason, it makes sense. But I'm just like, okay, listen, it doesn't have to make sense. You don't have to logic your way into beating up a kid or like hitting a kid or spanking a kid. I think perfectly good, well-intentioned parents are spanking their kids. And I do think that that's a generational curse that people have to eventually stop in their families. So like when I was with, my, when, now that I'm, you know, married, one of the conversations we brought up about children is whether or not we thought we would spank our kids. And so we both agreed that that is not interesting to us. We're not interested in spanking our kids. We want to break this generational curse. We don't want to continue it forward. But that takes, a, like I said, like a level of awareness that a lot of people aren't going to have, especially when you have a Tucker Carlson saying these things like it's reasonable because for a lot of parents, they're not thinking about it. They think they're bad parents if they don't spank their kids. They literally think they're bad parents if they don't spank their kids. Isn't that interesting? Again, there's the group of parents who really do want to beat up their kids because they literally want to hurt them. We're not talking about those parents. We're talking about the parents who literally think if I don't spank my kids, my kids are going to be bad people. And that's why we need education. And that's why we have to encourage parents to educate themselves. And that's why we have to encourage people to remember, like, being a, becoming a parent isn't the cute stuff, like dressing up your kid and going to Disneyland. It's the hard stuff. It's when you're stressed. It's when you're so fed up. It's when you're burnt out that makes parenting so hard. And this is why it's so frustrating when people are like, become a parent, become a parent, become a parent. Fuck all of you for encouraging people to become parents when you literally are so dysregulated, you have to hit your kids. Like, fuck you. So I understand where you're coming from because you're doing the thing that you were taught to do. You were literally just doing what you were taught to do which is why breaking generational curses are so hard because then you have to look at people in your family and you have to say to them, I think you're being abusive. And I know a lot of people don't like me using that word for certain things because in your bubbles, you've normalized it as just being normal in life, but it is abusive. And I also think just because you're abusive doesn't mean you, you, you can't stop being abusive and be a better person. And I think that's like the the dichotomy between it's why it's so hard to admit you're wrong. You have to create a path for people to be better, but also being wrong means you have to really, really embody why it's wrong. I think a lot of people don't understand that an apology isn't real if it's not embodied. You're just saying stuff. Anyways, I thought that clip was crazy, bro. So why's my life a mess? Please tell me cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, da, 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 da. 